Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Circulating Tumor Cells, Clinical Utility, Challenges, and Future Prospects, presented by Dr. Qing Meng, Director and Professor, Department of Laboratory Medicine, the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. We are excited to bring you this educational webcast presented by LabRoots, the leading scientific social networking website and provider of virtual events and webinars advancing scientific collaboration and learning. I'm Julie Simroth of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the green Q&A button located in the lower left of the presentation window and type your question into the box that appears on the screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Also, please notice that you will be viewing the presentation in the slide window. To enlarge the window, just click on the screen icon located in the lower right. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the support button at the top right of the presentation window. Or use the Q&A button to let us know that you're having a problem. This is an educational webinar and thus offers free continuing education credit. After the webinar is over, please click on the CE button located on the bottom left-hand corner of your webpage and follow the process of obtaining your credit. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Quing Meng. I will now turn the presentation over to him. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to share with you the current advance of circulating tumor cells. So in this talk, I'm going to give you a brief review of the principle technology and the clinical utility of the detection of circulating tumor cells. Then we'll discuss the current challenge and the future perspective of the CTC detection. And then hopefully at the end, we'll be able to identify those potential clinical use and the research interest of CTC detection, especially for the molecular pro profiling in the area of personalized cancer medicine. So circulating tumor cells was the first described in 1869 by an Australian pathologist, Dr. Thomas Ashworth. So under my group, he, he found this actually by accident. He found those cells uh, were identical to those primary tumor cells in a patient blood, a patient with metastatic cancer. So because that was found in the blood, in peripheral blood, Therefore, he named those cells uh, circulating tumor cells. So circulating tumor cells, by its meaning, are those cells that have entered into the vasculature and the, then circulate in the blood and release, of course, from a primary solid tumor cells. Circulating tumor cells are found in a very small, low number in the peripheral blood. It's about one to 10 cells in peripheral, uh, per, per milliliter of peripheral blood in patients with metastatic cancer. Typically about one tumor cells to one million leukocytes in the blood. It's almost like a finding for a needle in the haystack, right? Only a small portion of a CTC, when it's released in circulation, can survive. The half-life is about one to two hours. So within a 24 hours, it's only less than 0.1% of these cells can survive. But only 0.01% tumor cells in the circulation can survive and also to produce metastasis. The tumor cells circulate in the blood will be delivered and transferred into the remote organs and to continue to grow and produce the metastasis. Those organs are often involved are uh, those lungs, bone, and the liver. So after the first discovery almost 150 years ago, and nothing, uh, has, um, not much has been made since then, um, but uh, during the last decade, following the advance of the technology and the improvement of the detection sensitivity, and a number of technologies have been established and validated. So this table just summarizes 
uh, a variety of technologies being used for the detection for circulating tumor cells. As you can see, uh, the, basically they can be classified or categorized as antibody-based capture of assay, and also using the physical uh, characteristic of the tumor cells to isolate, to count the tumor cells based on the size, the shape, and others like a functional assay, that's more biological, functional cell culture assay, and also some other flow cytometry. So for the immune, actually, but still the immune assay, the antibody-based capture assay are the major uh, method nowadays being used. As you can see in this box, this green box, those two highlighted, one is the cell search, the other one is adena test. I will talk a little bit detail about that method. So CTC uh, assay has been just uh, indicated, you know, uh, during, especially during the last two decades, uh, a variety of technologies has been uh, uh, established and validated. Uh, those mostly include immunocapture, immunocytochemistry, flow cytochemistry, uh, nanoparticles, microscope, physical capture, biological function assay, and also most recently moving to PCR and even to uh, molecular sequencing. Those technologies are being used to detect uh, the tumor cells. However, there are no universal markers being uh, uh, standardized or used nowadays. But on the other hand, uh, most of the solid tumor cells, almost 85% uh, of solid tumor cells, are of epithelial orange. So based on that, uh, the expression of epithelial cell adhesion molecular is widely used. Therefore, CTC can be identified by the expression of epithelial markers such as EPCAM and subcarotene. The current two established methods for CTC detection, they all based C EPCAM capture technology. So the two uh, methods established are cell search, which is FDA approved using immunomagnetic and the Florence method. The second as a antenna test, which is approved in Europe, the first part is still use EPCAM antibody for the capture of C CTC, but the second part, the detection, they use RT-PCR based method. So just uh, share with you briefly with the cell search technology. Again, this is FDA approved. So this cell search assay consists of two main components. So one is the auto prep part which is just to isolate and capture the CTC from the whole blood using the immunomagnetic nanoparticle coated antibody specifically against the EPCAM. So the second part is to use the Florence, a specific Florence antibody conjugate to stain the tumor cells and then analyze under microscope. And those cells, tumor cells can be identified by the cytokeratin antibody which is specifically against cytokeratin 8, 18, and 19 for the cytoplasma, and showing the picture stain the green, that's cytoplasma. Dante is staining for the uh, nucleus. It's purple, looks purple, and also CD45 negative has to be, which to exclude the leukocytes in the blood. But therefore, the CTC is identified by EPCAM positive, CK positive, CD45 negative, and that is positive. In general, the detection for CTC can be used for the prognosis and also monitor the therapeutic response in cancer of patients. So a number of studies have demonstrated that increased CTC, the number of CTC in peripheral blood is associated with the decreased progression, free survival, and decreased overall survival in patients with metastatic breast cancer, colorectal cancer, or prostate cancer. Detection of CTC can also be used to monitor therapeutic response. Patients with persistently elevated CTC counts suggest an ineffective therapy and also the development of resistance. So let me share you briefly with those uh, milestone studies which eventually led to the FDA approval for the CTC. Currently, 
FDA has approved two assays, two assays, the assay for two, three types of cancer. One is metastatic breast cancer was approved by FDA in 2004. Metastatic colorectal cancer approved in 2007. And the metastatic prostate cancer was approved by FDA in 2008 with a different cutoff. For example, the cutoff of CTC uh, is greater or equal than 5 CTC in the detected in 7.5 milliliter blood for breast cancer and the prostate cancer. But for the colorectal cancer, the cutoff is 3 CTC. Again, the early studies have shown that the detection of the baseline CTC can predict the prognosis and also the survival. The left panel picture shows the progression-free survival, and the right panel shows the overall survival. And you can see on the left panel picture, the green line shows the patient with CTC less than five. So in this group, patients with fewer than five CTC detect has longer over the progression free survival. And you can see the two lines, the blue line and the red line, they're clearly separated. So the, on the other hand, the group of patients with CTC greater than five has shorter survival time and poor prognosis. The median survival time is for the CTC less than five is seven months, but for the CTC greater than five patient group, it's only 2.7 months, which is about half of the uh, survival time. If you look at the right panel, the green curve, again, that's the group patient with CTC less than five has overall longer, better survive. The median uh, survival time is almost 22 months, while in the patient, a group of patients with a, a higher number of CTC greater than five is only 11 months. Again, it's about half of that survival, short of the survival time. This clearly indicates the CTC, the detection of CTC can be used to predict the prognosis and also the outcome, the survival, survival time. So how about the mid-therapy detection of CTC, which means during the course or monitoring the disease, the course of CTC. So again, on the, on the left panel, you can see the uh, blue line. Again, this means this group patient shows you know, at the beginning, the baseline CTC is less than five, but during the course of therapy, uh, which is about three to four months, the course of therapy, and again, the CTC is less than five. And this group patients have very longer and better survival compared to the other group. But if you look again, the gray curve also, even though in the beginning, the baseline CTC is number is high, greater than five, but during the course of therapy, the CTC number reduced to less than five, which means this group of patients respond to therapy, right? And again, it shows a similar uh, prognosis and survival again. But on the other hand, uh, the left curve, red or yellow, even though you have a beginning, of course, if you have a beginning, your baseline high CTC, and during the course of CTC, you have a poor survival, a shorter survival time, poor prognosis. But even though in the beginning you have a, a CTC less than five, but during the course of therapy, the CTC uh, increase or become greater than five, again, that in indicates the therapeutic might be a resistant or a poor prognosis, and you can see clearly with a shorter uh, survival time. And the left panel just shows the number of the detection of CTC number. Uh, actually match quite very well to the clinical status. So again, the blue line indicates the CTC less than five in the beginning of the baseline, and also during the course of therapy, less than five, and it has complete response, which means a very good prognosis. Also clinically, it's a very, the response is very complete. But on the other hand, if you look at the red line, the, the beginning, the CTC is greater than five, a consistently, persistently elevated CTC during the course, which has a very uh, uh, poor prognosis. Again, it's a very progressive disease. So again, this uh, recent study pulled from uh, 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 17 uh, European centers, 20, include 20 studies, almost 2,000 patients uh, for the metastatic breast cancer. 
it clearly shows that detection of CTC can predict progression-free survival and also overall survival. The left panel just shows the progression-free survival. The, uh, the blue line is the, means the group patient with the CTC number less than five. Again, it has a longer, better survival than the red line, which represents the patient uh, group patient with the CTC number greater than five. Uh, similarly, the left, uh, right line, and right curve, right panel shows again with the fewer CTC detected in patients has better, longer survival compared to the CTC number greater than five group. So how about the metastatic colorectal cancer? Again, the baseline CTC can predict the progression-free survival as shows on the left panel. The blue, the, the blue line, again, that means the group of patients with CTC less than five, so which has a longer, better survival curve compared to the uh, yellow line, which represents a group of patients with a, a high CTC number, again. But this cutoff for colorectal cancer is three CTC, three CTCs. So the right panel shows the overall survival and the blue line, again, it will represent the group of patients with a CTC number less than three, and it has longer, better survive, and uh, compared to the group of patients with a high number of CTC. So similarly, during the therapy, during the course of therapy, uh, the detection of CTC can still predict, predict the prognosis. Again, the left panel shows uh, the you know different group various group at the beginning less than three that like shows a, a solid uh, a green uh, blue line and the, during the course of therapy is three to five weeks and the CTC is still less than five and it has the longest survival and the best prognosis compared to the other group even though the the, uh, the dot uh, blue line which means a group initially the baseline CTC is the greater than three, but uh, during the course of therapy, it reduced to less than three, again, it has a relatively better uh, survival compared to the other group, especially the one, you know, in the beginning, the baseline, the CTC high, but uh, during the course, the CTC number is still high, and that's the worst group with the prognosis. On the right panel, uh, panel again, that shows, uh, the over, uh, again, the clinical status, and uh, similarly, that the CTC number less than three, it has uh, indicates clinical, it's non-progressive disease. But on the other hand, if the CTC always elevated in the beginning during the course, which means always a prog progressive disease. So clearly indicate the detection of a CTC can predict the prognosis, also the survival, overall survival and progression free survival. So let's move on to the metastatic prostate cancer. Again, you can see this uh, uh, detection of a CTC from the baseline level. And again, the group of patients with CTC less than five as shown in the green, uh, green line, that has a longer, much longer uh, survival time compared, again, this overall survival curve compared to the red line group, which represent uh, a group of patients, prostate cancer patients, with a CTC number greater than five. So the medium survival time is almost twice uh, for CTC uh, uh, less than five group compared to the CTC high number of CTC group. So the left panel again shows the mid therapy. During the therapy, the number of CTC, again, it can predict the survival. Uh, clearly, it shows it, it shows the separation of the two lines, the green line and the uh, red line. Again, the green line always represents a group of patients with a fewer CTC number, less than five, compared to the group of patients with CTC uh, number higher than five. Again, the median time, survival time, almost two to three-fold longer in the CTC uh, less than five group. It has better prognosis. So the right panel just shows them, again, it's sort of an ROC curve. It shows the uh, prediction of the death mortality 
uh, with the detection with CTC, it seems, you know, the PS compared to PSA, the PSA is a biomarker used, mainly a tumor marker, biotumor marker used to monitor therapy and management for the man management of prostate cancer. Again, it shows the detection of CTC has better performance and prediction compared to PSA under the ROC curve. So, as I just indicated, the measurement and detection of CTC can be used for monitor patient therapeutic response and also to predict the prognosis and those demonstrated in those studies. However, in practice, that's not always the case. There are always some issues, some problems, some challenges. Uh, for example, the cell search, this assay, FDA approved cell search assay for CTC detection. It's not for early detection, cancer detection, right? And even only detect CTC in about 40% of metastatic breast cancer or colorectal cancer. Not all patients with metastatic cancer can be detected, can be found with CTC. So only about 40 to 50% of CTC can be detected. And also, uh, the, another issue is how to interpret the data of a low or undetectable CTC in patients with a poor prognosis. And I just indicated earlier, the number of CTC is associated with a, a, dec uh, a prognosis, right? Which means increased number uh, is associated with decreased uh, survival or with poor prognosis. But on the other hand, in this case, how to interpret it or those pa some of the patients with a low number or undetectable CTC, but the clinically the prognosis is very poor, it's very progressive in. So is that a real reduction of the CTC due to the therapeutic response or therapeutic efficacy? No, actually not. And that always usually indicates the emergence or development of drug resistance. So the <clears throat> potential mechanism on that is because tumor cells or cancer cells, they are very smart, right? They try to adapt the environment or to develop a new mechanism to against the therapeutic approach, drugs or whatever, again, to prevent and to, uh, to try to survive the tumor cells. Therefore, tumor cells, cancer cells themselves, downregulate the epithelial mark, markers on the tumor, uh, circulating tumor cell surface, like the FCAM, right? When another, another issue, which is very important and very critical, is uh, it's called epithelial mesenchymal transition. So the, most of the circulating tumor cells originally uh, as epithelial cells, but they change, develop to mesenchymal cells. So with that change, I'll share with you briefly, uh, again, the current assay, you know, both cell search assay and the antenna test assay are not capable of detecting this CTC once undergoing EMT, epithelial mesenchymal transition change. Once that developed, so the current assay wouldn't be able to detect. That's why, you know, the, the cell number, CTC number, becomes low or even undetectable, but the prognosis is even worse. That can, this can explain why uh, it, it, this happened, why the CTC number undetectable. So epithelial mesenchymal transition, the EMT, normally, like I said, the solid tumor cells, 85% are epithelial orange. So the, those epithelial lines side by side nicely and show the uh, uh, left top pan uh, picture and uh, ni side by side nicely with the nucleus a little bit polarized to the base. And, but once become the EMT or mesenchymal cells, uh, the, they have an irregular shape, usually become larger and irregular. But not only the physical change, it also undergoes some uh, genotype and a phenotype change. For example, if you look at the top right panel, the picture shows that normally the epithelial cells or tumor cells, CTC, there's some expression of the E candrin and the FCAM, right? Even the CK8, 18, 19, are those markers we use for the detection of CTC, right? 
So during this transition of the EMT, those markers, the expression will be downregulated or even disappeared. But uh, instead, there are new markers will appear, such as uh, entendering and also vimating, fibronectin. The problem is that with the disappearance of those uh, uh, regular markers, uh, classic markers, the antibody against those FCAN won't be able to detect, right? So that's why it became negative or undetectable. But with the new appearance, okay, the genotype, phenotype change, also the physical change, uh, will cause some biological functional change. So those EMT CTC circulated tumor cells become very, very aggressive, invasive, and most importantly, they have become resistant to chemotherapy and other therapy. And also they are less prone to apoptotic and necrotic. So all in all, the, these cells, the transition of uh, epithelial cells to mesenchymal cells makes the CTC become more resistant. And that's one of the mechanisms of drug resistance. And also the part of the mechanism for uh, metastasis. So based on that, uh, we and our collaborators and I, we work together to develop a specific antibody against cell surface vimating, and I showed in previous slide with the disappearance of the e candering and f cam but there's some new expression. You know, there's always some change, something disappears, something appears, something comes out. So we develop a specific antibody against the cell surface vimating and use this antibody, we demonstrate th this method, uh, this specific antibody is able to detect, capture the new EMT CTC, or the CTC circulating tumor cells undergone uh, epithelial mesenchymal uh, transition. So I showed the low panel, we demonstrate uh, again, uh, this, uh, the low left panel shows those against leukocyte, because we have to exclude, eliminate the leukocytes in the blood, right, always, it, because a lot, a lot of number, huge number of leukocytes are white cells. You know, they are nucleated cells. You have to eliminate those. But we have the kit to eliminate. Then label with the antibody, specific antibody. Here it shows AD4-1. And this antibody is able to capture the C EMT CTC and shows stain with the Florence. And then using this antibody, we were able to detect uh, patients. And you can see the bottom right uh, panel, it shows with normal healthy group, those CTC undetectable with this specific antibody, which is true, which is uh, reasonable, logical. But on the other hand, with sarcoma patient, you can see a large number of uh, CTC detected by this new method, EMT CTC method, or specifically called the antibody 84-1 against cell surface remitting method. So then use this established methodology, the assay. We then uh, uh, analyze those CTC in a, a different patients, uh, for example, breast cancer patients, and compare the current methodology with the FDA approved methodology assay, right? So uh, this slide just shows, demonstrates the uh, the new method or EMT CTC method, uh, the antibody against cell surface remitting works. For example, if you look uh, the second column, you know you can see the top E candering disappeared, and EPCAM very much the staining, the Florence, the very faint, very much downregulated. This indicates the EMT epithelial mesenchymal transition of those CTC. But uh, on the other hand, you can see 84 wound antibodies. The Florence is very intensive. And also almost uh, this, again, the new antibody we developed to specifically to capture and against this uh, uh, cell surface remitting for those CTC undergone EMT. And those staining, the intensity, if you look at that Florence, comparable with those stain with the twist uh, snail and the Fox C2, Fox C2. Uh, those uh, traditional markers used for the EMT, for mesenchymal staining antibody. So with that 
development of this assay, then we apply this assay, use this assay to run the patient, compare the current uh, FDA-approved cell search. And you can see in this uh, slide, so we, again, we assign the patient group and uh, uh, breast cancer patient to two groups, one is a stable group, the other one with the progression. Okay, so compared to the cell search method, but the CSV method has better sensitivity and specificity. As you can see, the A and the B uh, between the two groups. And this table just uh, uh, summarizes the uh, parameter specific for sensitivity, specificity, positive predict value, and a negative predict value. Or overall, the CSV method has better performance compared to the cell search method. Then we move to this method, use this method to detect colorectal cancer cells in the patient's peripheral blood. Again, we will first we have to demonstrate this works, right? The last panel, the picture shows, again, with the EPCAM, it almost disappeared if you look at the third column, the bottom, and the EPCAM disappeared. e candidate very weak, very faint staining, which is, means very much down-regulated. But the 84-1 staining is still very clear, intensive, the Florence compared similar to other snail, FOX2. Uh, again, uh, this used for the uh, mesenchymal staining. That means and those cells are detected are mesenchymal cells or the CTC, EMT CTC cells. So also we use the in vitro assay and show in the panel B, we spike the CTC into the uh, cell line into the blood and uh, that shows this method can detect those uh, CTC uh, in the dose depend or number of cell number depend response very nicely, very linear the line. Right. Okay, then we check or measure account uh, patient CTC. Uh, specifically EMT CTC using the specific assay CSV method. And, and you can see clearly in this group, several uh, different group of patients, healthy group, uh, it's very low undetectable CTC, but with a stable group, you have a relatively high number of CTC detected compared to the healthy group, but, but much, much lower than the group with the progression or progressive disease. Uh, that again in the colorectal cancer patient group, high number, highly elevated, and the CTC increased. Again, this uh, CTC detected by cell surface vomiting antibody specific against EMT CTC. So clearly, that shows the CTC detection, the EMT CTC detection can predict the prog prognosis or the progression. We also test this method in prostate cancer patients. Of course, first, again, we have to demonstrate this method works for the staining. And uh, uh, similarly, you can see this uh, right panel, uh, E panel uh, picture. At the bottom, the E camp, F camp disappeared, right? The E candidate disappeared. You barely can see the Florence staining. Again, which means this uh, down regulate this expression, the normal epithelium. Uh, molecular, cell surface molecular downregulate, even disappeared, but uh, with further development of e mesenchymal cells or EMT transition, so as it stand by 84 wounds, antibody against cell surface limiting, and uh, similar to FOX2, right, and others. But uh, also we use this method, we check over the cell line first. Then we move, use this method to check the patient samples. And uh, you can see, again, we compare the two methods, FDA-approved cell search method side by side for these uh, two group uh, patients. One is a stable, the other one is a progressive uh, uh, group. So both sides, you can see, uh, with the progressive and also with the stable group, and uh, CSV, and also, with, in other words, 84 one antibody, again, this, ha this group has better performance better sensitivity and show the B panel and better specificity and show in the stable group. 
And also, we further analyzed, compared uh, using the ROC curve against yeah. under the RUC, ROC curve. So the, cell, the new method, the 84 one method or CSV method, has better performance versus uh, the traditional the cell search method. And both sensitivity, specificity, uh, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. Also, we use this CTC, EMT CTC method can be uh, de to detect the different stage of prostate cancer. And we know PSA, you know, it's a tumor biomarker. It's been used to monitor the disease, but the progression and the management. So usually, as you see, the panel C is the right, uh, rough, uh, far right C. You see, you know, in the patient with hormone sensitive group, and has a low, which means response to uh, hormone uh, androgen deprivation, deprivation, but with the castration resistant group, the PSA level is elevated. But on the panel A, you see using the uh, new assay, the CTC method, it shows similar trend prediction. Again, with the hormone sensitive group, uh, the CTC number is lower compared to the castration resistance, which means, again, it's a progressive group, right? But the B, panel B, the CTC, the uh, tradition of the, the current FDA approved CTC uh, can predict somehow, but still there are some outliers which cannot be predict predictable, right? But all in all, the CTC method with the specifically CSV method for EMT CTC can be used for the prediction, the progression of prostate cancer. So cancer cells or CTC detection itself has utility, but also has a limitation, and we just discussed. But further characterization of uh, molecular profiling of CTC might shed light or expand, extend the utility of the detection of CTC. And therefore, we investigate whether the PDL1 expression can be used to predict the prognosis. So PDL1 L1 is expressed in this study slide shows, you know, this PDL1 staining and uh, show, stain in the car in red and shows there's an increased expression of PDL1 in this uh, uh, cancer patients, and uh, we use different group and breast, colon, uh, prostate, osteosarcoma. The, all of these tumor cells can be stained with PDL1. But of course, this uh, CSV positive or EMT positive CTC, which stained uh, by 841 antibody and shows in green color, the Florence. But definitely, there's an increased expression for PDL1. Then we use this further characterization or expression of PDL1. Then we analyze uh, a CTC. And on the top panel A and B, this just use the CTC or EMT CTC method, which, uh, as we also discussed earlier, can be used to predict uh, progression free. Survival, also pro overall survival, which is known then. But if you look at the lower panel, C and D, the C represent progression free and D uh, represent overall survival. But with the further characterization of a PDL1 expression of a CTC, so which means there are two steps. You capture the CTC, then you further characterize with the PDL1 expression. In this case, we use a nuclear. P, uh, expression of a PDL in, in cell nucleus expression of PDL1 uh, clearly shows the, the black line, uh, which is negative, has a, the two lines, the black line, you know, kind of C and D, the two lines are clearly separate. So the black, the dark, the black one represent negative uh, PDL1 uh, expression. Again, with negative or no. PDL1 expression, it has a longer, better survive or prognosis for the pro either progression free or the overall survival. So this this means with the further characterization, molecular characterization of CTC, it may extend the uh, uh, utility of detection of CTC and most most importantly provide additional information for better an accurate
prognosis. We also use this PDL1 expression for uh, prostate cancer. Again, it shows the lower panel C and D with the expression, the detection of the expression of PDL1. Uh, again, it can uh, predict the prognosis. So the PDL1 negative staining shows the line in the uh, dark line and has longer, better survival compared to the PDL1 positive staining. Again, positive expression that always has poor prognosis. So this just indicates, again, the further characterization, the PDL1 expression can be used for the uh, uh, prognosis of prostate cancer patients and provide even better additional information. And this, again, uh, uh, consistent with the early study uh, published by Dr. Kuhlman. Uh, and what they show in this their study, you know, with the, the left panel shows the uh, CTC, just regular CTC detection to predict the survival, the overall survival, which is reasonable for the ovary cancer patient. But further, they characterize this CTC with the ERCC1 expression. Again, the group of ERCC1 negative and show in the sort of a gray uh, line and has a longer, with no ERCC1 expression, has a longer, better survival compared to the ERCC1 expression or positive ERCC1. And again, this CTC itself has a utility, but the further characterization or sub uh, characterization or molecular profiling can provide additional information for, for the better prognosis. So CTC and also has a correlation with some CTDNA. Now we talk about the liquid biopsy always, mostly which uh, represent circulating tumor cells and circulating tumor DNA now, right? This, uh, so therefore you can see the CT, this is the right panel, this is a good correlation between CTC and circulating tumor DNA. But that means that the same CTDNA can, be, uh, can come from necrotic apoptotic uh, uh, tumor cells, not necessarily comes from CTC, but on the other hand, CTC for sure can release the CTDNA, but certainly you can see sort of a correlation and shows on the right panel. Again, this is a very recent study shows of the, uh, uh, shows the detection of a copy number of aberration in CTC can predict the survival. So the left panel, C, to, uh, left panel uh, shows with the classic uh, clinical classification for the prognosis with the two groups, between two groups. The right panel shows the uh, detection, determination of a copy number of aberration in CTC chromosome can provide better and also the prognostic information prognosis. Again, with the low number of copy number of aberration, it has a longer, better survival and shows the right panel. The top is the overall survival. The right low panel is a progression-free survival. But uh, uh, anyway, so with the further characterization and determination of copy number aberration in CTC chromosome can provide a better uh, 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 prediction. So again, just touch a little bit of CTDNA. Again, it's not a part of a CTC, but certainly it's a derived or related uh, circulated tumor cells, but of course it's a, a major part nowadays uh, and the liquid biopsy. But the, this slide just shows clearly uh, with the, the copy number or the amount of uh, circulating tumor DNA detected in the blood can predict the survival, uh, pre predict the survival, and you can see that when we talk, the, uh, the blue line shows a high copy number has the worst prognosis, the shortest survival, while with the low number, 25% uh, percent of quartile CTDNA, it has the beta, the longest survival, which means the number, uh, the amount, the copy of number of CTDNA uh, are associated with the decrease the prognosis or survival. So the detection of a CTC can be used, uh, CTDNA, sorry, can be used for the prognosis. But that's uh, uh, of the topic, a CTC topic, but it's uh, somehow related, just share with you briefly. So all in all, as we discussed uh, so far, we know CTC has its utility, can be used for prognosis, and also to monitor uh, 
therapy, uh, therapy, especially when you move further characterize the CTC uh, with the EMT antibody and also with uh, some characterization new molecular markers, PDL1, ER, ERCC1, and also other the copy number, right, for 60 chromatin. Again, this further characterization will provide additional information and uh, extend its utility. But, uh, However, this is not always the case, it has also has a limitation. So this currently, for example, CTC measurements have not been included into the clinical guidelines because its clinical utility is still not quite clear. And, uh, and technically, it has low sensitivity for detection. It's about one CTC detecting 7.5 milliliter of uh, whole blood. So the standard is to collect 7.5 milliliter and then you count measure how many CTC you detect in 7.5 milliliter. The sens sensitivity is very low, right? One tumor cells in 7.5 milliliters uh, blood. And it's only not all patients with metastasis can be detected with CTC. It's only detectable about in 30 to 60 percent of cancer patients, even with the late stage with metastasis. And also during, you know, the, the current cell search has a long process of isolation and uh, uh, separation. So during this can cause some change, apoptosis, uh, deformation, of elongation. This may uh, affect the specificity, okay? So multiple step isolation can damage the cells, uh, impact re uh, recovery and accuracy. And also when you identify still human, uh, determine it's an operator uh, judgment, right? It can be subjective counts when you count the foreign stain CTC. That's a big variation. Coefficient of variation is about 50 over even some percent of the variation. It's a little bit uh, subjective. And also there's some techniques. There are like, even though there are a number of techniques being uh, uh, established, validated, but still there are lack of new techniques for CTC enrichment and isolation, mostly uh, due to the sensitivity and specificity. Of course, those identification of CTE uh, is only approved so far for FDA approved only for uh, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and also prostate cancer, right? So still only of limited and not to expand to the other type of cancer. And also, keep in mind, tumor cells are very heterogeneous, right? Therefore, there's no universal markers. That's another limitation and challenge. And also, we know, we learned that uh, tumor cells try to adapt new environment and to survive. So therefore, there's always a down regulation of those markers, but the current technology will, will miss the detection, won't be able to detect, right? Most of the significant is called epithelial missing caramel transition, right? When the cells undergone that step, EMT, the current technology won't be able to detect. So therefore, it won't be able to provide accurate or uh, predictive information. And also, this uh, detection of CTC only used for prognosis, right? Not for early detection. And there are some pre analytical issues, sample collection, and also access standardization, automation, especially the control, external control. There's no, uh, we do just peer, of course, we use peer group uh, evaluation assessment for external quality control, but this CAP does not provide or has no uh, proficiency testing survey material. And also there are lots of new devices, techniques, technology, but those, uh, but uh, for those uh, CTC, but again, they're not uh, well validated uh, for clinical use, especially not uh, well defined for clinical endpoint, whether this, can, this technology, this detection of CTC, using this technology can improve the overall, overall survival. And a little bit at this point, point, we, uh, uh, point is that the phase three SWOGS S500 trial failed to demonstrate that CTC are a good marker in guiding therapy in women with metastatic breast cancer. So, but anyway, we just discussed the limitation, right? But I know there's lots of limitations and challenge. However, CTC is not dead yet. The detection of CTC is not that dead, it's not the end of life, but still there's lots of opportunity 
and also uh, uh, put opportunity and uh, to develop for the further development new technology. So currently, the new technology are being developing and validating. One of the examples is a large, so-called large blood volume filtration by so-called a cell collector, and also the technology technique for leukapheresis, right, which can be used because one of the issues we measure is the low sensitivity, only detect one cell, tumor cell in 7.5 milliliter. So with this technology, you'll be able to filter to search large volume blood. You don't have to collect uh, out of the body in vitro, right? You can just uh, uh, circulate with circulation. You have a chance, opportunity, increase the sensitivity, opportunity to capture tumor cells. But other technology could be some point care, or transcutaneous uh, detection, some using some sensor technology to detect, capture, or detect at least tumor cells. There are other new technologies, such as uh, telomerase activity, after technology, so fish, flow cytometry, uh, molecular technique, RT-PCR, deep sequencing, and next generation sequencing. These are being used for the detection of and also molecular profiling of uh, tumor cells. And of course, this new uh, methodology are being validated uh, for various type of cancer beyond those three uh, types of cancer which are approved by FDA. And of, of course, the other interesting area is the CTC secreted or related release protein markers into the circulation. So in theory, in CTC uh, it, it will be uh, has very, are very active in metabolism, so they can release something, particles, protein into the circulation. Capture of this protein will be very useful, valuable for the determination of cancer, right? And also, this can be used to expand this new technology or t uh, for CTC determination can be used to uh, uh, other type of cancer, such as the lung, liver, pancreas, ovaria, right? And also, future studies should be also focused on molecular profiling, characterization of CTC. This has already been done in reports such as IGF, EGFR, HER2, Bancor, Keras, ERCC1, right? And uh, again, most importantly, uh, the reason is, is uh, this genotyping for mutation of CTC, which is called single cancer tumor cell uh, genetic mutation sequencing, right? This can be used to guide therapy, target therapy, which is a part of a companion diagnostics. So other tumor-derived particles, such as the circulating tumor and microemboli, circulating tumor microvesicle, and exosome, these contain lots of information, DNA, RNA. Again, this can be used, and are being used now, still under validation process. So most importantly, the tumor-derived nucleic acid, right? that we know, peptide RNA, microRNA, uh, especially the circulating free DNA or specifically circulating tumor DNA are being uh, uh, measured nowadays used in the clear lab or if, uh, uh, in the many clinical laboratory, uh, laboratories and uh, uh, especially then for the sequencing using the uh, DDPCR or next uh, GS sequencing and this as part of a liquid bios uh, biopsy guiding uh, targeted therapy are being used. So again, this slide just shows that uh, there's a potential expansion to the traditional three type of cancer, to other types such as the lung, blood, blood cancer, uh, pancreatic cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, and also ovary cancer. And with further characterization, also molecular profiling of these tumor cells. Again, it will shed light, light, and also bring additional information for prognosis and most importantly, guiding therapy. So uh, in term, even the, in terms of a, a tumor cell isolation and even for the research purpose, you know, think about research, in vitro study, you, you do whether you do drug sensitivity, susceptibility, sensitivity study. So the isolation of a tumor cells from the human body from a cancer patient would be much, much more relevant compared to cell line, right? So this is, uh, offer or provide a very useful tool to study drugs, uh, to drugs and drug resistance, right? And also to study the biological mechanism. Uh, again, it's much more relevant compared to cell line because it's from really from tumor 
uh, cancer patients to study biology, tumor biology, tumor regenesis, the mechanism of metastasis, and also, uh, and again, specifically, for even for the target therapy. So the most important thing for tumor cells, CTC isolation, now that's being used in a study, it's called single two cancer cell uh, mutation uh, sequencing, single cancer cell sequencing for those isolation of a single cell and then further molecular profiling, mutation uh, uh, detection and sequencing. And this can be used for guiding therapy, target therapy. So just to summarize, again, the future is still in the liquid. So CTC, detection CTC, a potential valuable resource for personalized cancer therapy. And it can be used for prognosis. It can be used to predict the, uh, uh, prognosis. It can be used, especially with the single cancer cell uh, sequence, sequencing, with the mutation analysis and mutation detection, can be used to guide the target therapy. It can be used to monitor the disease progression and also to track the resistance during the course of therapy, during the course of disease. It is a minimal invasive and it's a part of a liquid biopsy and also, um, but that's not, uh, again, that's not enough with the CTC itself as we discussed has limitation, but certainly the next step will be moved to the further to the cellular and molecular level and molecular analysis specifically for CTC and also CTC related circulating tumor DNA, RNA, microRNA, long non-coding RNA, and mut for mutation analysis, which is a part of, of genotyping and precision medicine, and most usefully, use, mostly um, uh, used for guiding the therapy, of course, for prognosis, and potentially can be used for early detection. Again, with that, I'd like to thank my colleagues for their support and the collaboration. And also, I'd like to thank the audience for their uh, uh, attention. And also, I'd like to thank the lab booth for giving the opportunity to share with you my experience. And thank you very much. Dr. Ming, for that informative presentation. It's time for Q&A. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window, type your question into the box that appears on your screen, and click on the Send button. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. If we are unable to get to your question, we will follow up with you via email after the presentation. Let's get started. Our first question is, can be used for early diagnosis of cancer? Uh, no, and I think so, uh, not at this moment with the current technology. Although there are many technologies being validated and used for detection of CTC, currently there are only two methods being approved for uh, clinical use. So one is the cell search and the other one is the antigen test. And all these are used for prognosis and monitoring the therapeutic response of a patient with metastatic cancer. So in principle, uh, once CTC is detected in the blood, it always means at least middle to late stage. In other words, this means with patient with metastasis, so it's not early uh, stage and not for early uh, detection diagnosis. However, with the improvement of sensitivity of CTC detection technology and maybe other techniques such as molecular profiling and genetic uh, mutation analysis, this might become possible. Thank you. The next question is, what are the major challenges of detection of CTCs? Yes, as discussed in my presentation, although the detection of CTCs is clinically useful, so we are still facing many challenges, and the CTC, detection of CTC itself still has very uh, much uh, uh, limitation. For example, CTC measurements have not been included in the clinical uh, guideline and still needs more clinical evidence. This may hamper its clinical application. Uh, in the technical part, the, t the detection technology has low sensitivity. So it only detects one tumor cells in 7.5 milliliter, the sensitivity. 
and also only detectable in the, a small a portion, a 30, 60 percent of metastatic cancer patients. So also there's some uh, specificity issue. During the process of isolation of CTC, the cells may be damaged, became apoptotic, uh, for chain, so for deformed, elongated. So this will affect the specificity of CTC and also the recovery and accuracy. And then even though there are new techniques, technology for CTC uh, enrichment isolation, but again, this needs to be well validated. Again, currently, they are not FDA approved. So also cancer cells are uh, undergone some epithelium to mesenchymal transition change, right? And this makes it uh, difficult for the current technology to detect these cells uh, in cancer patients, especially in the cancer patient, late stage cancer patient. So there are also some pre analytical issues, standardization, uh, quality control, and especially external quality control. There's no cap that does not have the proficient testing material uh, for this evaluation of performance. Thank you. We have time for one more question, and that question is, what can you foresee the future perspective of CTC research? Okay, thank you. Yeah, CTC as part of a liquid biopsy is advancing rapidly. There, there are and there will be a new technologies for sure for CTC detection, such as the current emerging like fish flow cytometry and the molecular techniques and RT-PCR deep sequencing, next generation sequencing. And of course, validation of this new assay for clinical utility uh, provide further opportunity for clinical uh, application to detect uh, more than other the three type of cancer, breast, colorectal, or prostate, right? Can be moved for lung, liver, pancreas, ovary cancer. So also CTC, as we know, can secrete or release lots of particles which contain lots and lots of information, such as exosome, mac, uh, micro, vesicle, mitochondria. So these should be analyzed, could be analyzed, and may provide better predicting information uh, for cancer, uh, even if the mechani biological mechanism or guiding the therapy. Also, some future study could be possible to focus on molecular profiling and characterization of CTC itself. Uh, you, go, you call so-called single CTC sequencing or mutation detection. Again, genetic genomic analysis. This could be used as a part of a target therapy or guiding the target therapy and part of a precision medicine, precision tumor medicine. And other parts, the tumor derived nucleic acid. Now we talk about RNA, microRNA, ctDNA. Again, this, especially ctDNA is merging as a part of a liquid biopsy with the next uh, molecular sequencing by the DD, PGR, P, PCR, and also next generation sequencing are being used to guide in therapy and the liquid biopsy. And other kind of a genotype mutation analysis, CTC, also can be potentially uh, uh, validated and used for companion diagnostics and further for precision medicine. I would like to once again thank Dr. Meng for his presentation. Do you have any final comments? So oh, I think it's a final comment. Just uh, those, anyway, just to be aware, the, the current uh, the CTC, the utility of the current technology, it has utility, but also has a limitation. But on the other hand, certainly, it also gives a lot of potential for further development in the future. Thank you once again, Dr. Meng. I would also like to thank LabRoots for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through January 12, 2018. You will receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all from now. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>